Hi guys and welcome to this video where we're going to take a look at Hadoop and Apache Spark. And if you want loads more free content, join this Avalek family by hitting that like button, hitting that subscribe button, giving us a big thumbs up. Thank you very much. Let's get on with the video. So first of all, I've led you down the garden path. I told you not to get into flame wars and guess what? People always want to get into flame wars. Which technology is better? Which one's this? What salary do you get? Blah, blah, blah. None of that is here. We're all here for the technology. And first of all, these two technologies, Hadoop and Apache Spark, are not against each other. In fact, Apache Spark uses Hadoop. What is big data? Well, big data is when you have to store a large amount of data, large data sets. For example, if you want to analyze voices or if you want to learn about people's shopping habits to show them relevant products, services, or information. A lot of large websites do this. And this is called big data, right? So you need somewhere to store all of this data, the user's habits, the, the data about where they've gone and where they've visited and, and how much time they've spent on pages. All this information is correlating so that you can look at and assess this data later. So this is what we call big data and Hadoop is here to actually store vast amounts of data. So Hadoop is a database and it allows you to structurally store your data in large volumes. And it also works with, for example, microservice architecture as well. So next up, what is Apache Spark? Well, think of Apache Spark as the analyst. So Hadoop is this big bucket of data. And unless we do something with it, all we have is a big bucket of data. Now, Hadoop stores things on the hard drives and so forth because hard drives are cheaper. If you look at the cost of actually adding extra hard drive space onto a server, it's far cheaper than having a database in memory. A memory driven database is more expensive because RAM is more expensive. If you want to buy RAM for your computer, that's more expensive per gigabyte than obviously your hard drive. Now, even though they're getting better and better each year, they're both getting better and better. And quite frankly, hard drives are still the cheapest way. So Hadoop is this big bucket of data with that big data in there. Now we need to go into that bucket, analyze it, study it, so that that data that we've stored up is not a complete waste of time. We actually now have the ability to analyze. This is where the real thinking happens and that's where Apache Spark comes in. So on top of that, Apache Spark has SQL. So what that allows you to do, that SQL plugin for Apache Spark is it lets you pull out data using Python, R, Java, Scala, lets you pull that data out and analyze it so that the data actually becomes valuable. If I just leave it in a big bucket and say, that's big data, I've just spent a lot of money storing a lot of information that hasn't added any value to the company that's storing that information. What are the user's habits? How do I advertise the best services and products for that particular customer? If I don't have those answers to those questions, I just have a big pile of data, a very large server bill, and I'm not making as much money because I've not answered those questions. So Apache Spark just basically lets you pull things out in data frames and data sets and then load them in. Now, Apache Spark likes going with more of a columnized database. So it's not really there to store records of information in. Don't think of Apache Spark as like that. Apache Spark isn't really supposed to be used for that. Apache Spark is there to analyze that big data, to present some answers, to find things, find things out about the user. So you can pull that information out with SQL and the SQL core package that's in Apache Spark. So I can pull that big bucket of data out and I can get, let's say, all the records to do with a particular user, right, who's logged in. I want to know everything about this user that's logged in. Pull that out of Hadoop. Excellent. Fantastic, we've got this load of data here, that's brilliant. What else can you do with Apache Spark? Well, there's a few other things. There's called Apache Spark ML. ML stands for machine learning. So this allows me to run multiple algorithms and configure those algorithms to find information that's useful. And then I can go, aha, the user likes this type of product or this type of service. And I can also, with machine learning, learn how they're responding necessarily to the data that I'm giving them. 
So if I give them services and they're just immediately not interested, I know I need to change something in the algorithm or change how that data is being served. And that's something that's really, really useful. So that's also what machine learning is. Machine learning can also learn the habits of users as well. So it can look at the habits. You know, we are creatures of habits, human beings, and therefore computers need to analyze those habits and say, what do they normally look at? What do they normally like? And if I get shared cookies and I can see them going onto different sites and articles and information, if that data is available to me, I can use that data as well that's stored in my big data set. And then I can learn more about what you like. This is usually what happens with video feeds, such as the Facebook video feed. It will look at things that you usually typically look at uh, for a large period of time, and then obviously display relatable information. Then also you have Apache Spark Graph Core plugin. These are all core plugins. Uh, so what Graph allows you to do is plot data. It's really designed to take big data and plot it out onto large graphical you know, interfaces, data sets, so that people can analyze that information, they can study it, and there's some kind of record. It's no good just a computer being able to analyze this. Sometimes you need to put it in graphical form so human beings can understand this. So you've got a presentation, you need to take that data and say, this is the user sort of engagement. Is it going up or is it going down? And so what we can do with this uh, sort of graph API is we can plot that data. Now it doesn't let you go back and update data. So the graph always says I'm plotting new data. It's almost like it's designed for real time, which we'll get onto the next plugin. So it won't let you go, right, well there's a point in 2020 and we're gonna update that data. No, it's always, it's a, it's a timeline sort of graph where everything will be plotted in real time, hopefully, or if not, it has to be plotted at that time and cannot be adjusted from the past. This allows for fast data integration and it allows you to output things a little bit faster. It's more like the functional approach where you are not trying to modify the previous state, you're always trying to move along with the trend. Then you finally have Apache Spark streaming. And what streaming allows you to do is pull in multiple sources. So let's say I have multiple Hadoop databases, or maybe I have a Hadoop database and I have a Postgres database and I have all sorts of things. I can pull in feeds of information and feeds of data from pretty much anywhere that I would like. It will take that data and stream it. And that way I can get, let's say, real-time analysis, real-time machine learning, you can integrate these plugins obviously with one another. That's what they're there for. So I can stream in all the data and then put that into a graph. Or I can stream in that data and then use the Apache Spark machine learning. So that is what streaming is. It's streaming these buckets, big data buckets all to you. And then it's going, let's analyze it. And that's exactly what Apache Spark does. And it does it incredibly fast. Apache Spark can be up to nearly 100 times faster when dealing with this. Now the reason why Apache Spark, I don't want you to think of a database is because it does a lot of these things in memory. Obviously the fastest way to analyze data is if the data is in what's known as RAM or random access memory. That is expensive. You can't just store all your big data in RAM. So that's where I use Hadoop and other database technologies. And then with Apache Spark, you pull that data set out, then you analyze, then you you know, start working with the data. And usually you'll work with it chunks at a time or streams of information at a time. So as you're streaming this data through, through memory, it's plotting everything out and giving you the information and then onto the, and, and we're just gonna keep streaming in and obviously producing the information that we need in the data. So Hadoop is actually used by Apache Spark. They are not against one another. Hadoop is there to store that big data. There are other databases you can use to store big data, but Hadoop has been specific, uh, specifically designed for this. And obviously Apache Spark is the big brain that will take that information, take that data, analyze it, and then it will actually allow you to do some really tricky stuff. Some stuff where you have to be like a super mass bod to be able to do. Now we've got Apache Spark machine learning that lets us use predefined algorithms and information to get information out and we don't have to code everything from scratch. So 
Hadoop, database, Apache Spark, streaming, machine learning, graph, and then also you have SQL, and SQL will help pull information out of structured databases as well. So there is an encapsulation of both those technologies working beautifully together to allow a more adaptive system. All right, guys, so hopefully you found this information very useful. And if you found it useful, join us on this Avalex family where we have loads of more useful content that's going to come out. Hit that subscribe button, hit that ding dong bell and give us a big thumbs 